Hello and welcome to another episode of Piano TV. I'm Alicia, your host, and happy 2019. We've been talking about Greek throughout December, and I wanted to touch on a couple more Greek-related topics. So today what we're going to be talking about is Greek's easiest piano pieces. Now, I've made a bunch of these videos in the past, and the purpose of this video is if you're interested in getting into Greek's music, you've never played his music before, or maybe you've played a couple pieces, but you want a little bit more structure and understanding of, of how difficult his pieces are, that's what this video is for. So Greg's music starts on the piano at about an intermediate level. So if you're a beginner, this probably isn't really going to apply to you. And one thing I'm not going to be talking about today are collection books. So say, for example, for Greek, he has a really famous suite called Pyrrhute Suite, which is the Hall of the Mountain King and stuff in that. And you could find a whole bunch of piano books and sheet music arrangements of like an easier version of that music for piano. So if you're a beginner and you want to get into Greek's music, that would be the route to go. Start with some of those easy adaptations of his most famous pieces. But if you're an intermediate student and you're like, rare and to get into it. That's what we will be talking about today. And we'll also briefly mention a few of his more difficult works as well, just again, to give you a little bit of a mental map on his piano music. So let's get started. There are 10 volumes of lyric pieces, which ends up being 66 pieces in total. And I think these are Grieg's most significant piano compositions. I love the first volume, especially Opus 12, because it opens up this really nice sounding romantic repertoire to the intermediate student before most people are able to tackle heavier music like stuff by Chopin and Liszt and so on. Greg's lyric pieces tend to fall between grades five to 10 if you're using the RCM or about Henley levels three to seven. I'm going to be sharing with you the absolute easiest of these, the ones that are at level two and three, but you should know that most of his lyric pieces are going to be easier than the other collections we're going to be talking about later on in this video. And I'm also going to mention some of his most famous works at the end here. So we have Wedding Day and Trolltagen, March of the Dwarfs, and To the Spring. These are among some of Grieg's most well-known pieces, but they're also some of the more challenging ones in the lyric pieces collection between uh, like Henley six, grade nine, grade 10 level. But I did want to mention them because a lot of people wonder about those pieces in particular. But the easiest pieces from the lyric pieces are going to be Patriotic Song, the Waltz Watchman Song, Folk Song, and Arietta, which is really beautiful. It's Opus 12, number one. So it's the first one in his set. This is one that is... Uh, a lot of students really, really want to learn this one, but I wouldn't necessarily start with it because it, it's got a lot going on. It's actually like a really good introduction. The Arietta is a really good introduction to Liszt's music, I find, especially like the Liebestroms, but I think it's just a, it's a little harder than grade six, which is where RCM puts it. Greek's poetic tone pictures are fairly playable for the early advanced student. Out of the six pieces, the first, second, and fourth are at about a grade eight RCM level. This is a lesser known collection, but I still think it's worth checking out if you're wanting something a little bit more, I, I guess a little bit more formal than the more emotive lyric pieces. Another collection that appears in the RCM syllabus is Grieg's Opus 19, Pictures from Life in the Country. This album is for the more advanced students uh, around a grade 10 level. So I really didn't want to mention it, like this isn't one of the easiest pieces, but I did want to mention it because if you are like planning a long-term I don't know, Greek trajectory, or you've tried some of the lyric pieces and want a challenge, um, this can be something to look at. Now it has three pieces and yeah, it's kind of a fun little collection there. And like many of his pieces and uh, the ones we're gonna talk about next too, these are based on Norwegian folk tunes. Grieg wrote four humoresques and like much of his other music, like I just mentioned, is heavily influenced by Norwegian folk music. These four humoresques are at around a grade eight RCM level or ABRSM level six. So this would be a good collection to approach if you're looking for something really upbeat or something livelier after exploring a few of the lyric pieces. Um, you can do it around the same time you would try the poetic tone pictures or you do one or the other and that would be fine too. Grieg wrote some other piano music that I want to mention, but again, since they're more difficult, we won't discuss them in any depth. I just want to mention them. So first of all, we have the Baroque inspired suite for the 200th birthday of the popular poet Holberg. Um, it's called From Holberg's Time. Now this was written with Baroque convention in mind, but even though it's written in a, in a suite style and it has some Baroque dances, it's still written with Grieg's trademark romanticism. 
Um, there's also a version for the suite for the string orchestra, and it's actually more popular, but Grieg did originally write it for piano. Now, it's a tough suite. As you can see, it's ranging in difficulty from Henley level five to seven. Um, so you might want to give the Saraband and Gavotte a try if you're at that kind of grade nine, grade 10 level in piano. Next is his Piano Sonata Opus 7 at a Henley level 7. So it's pretty advanced. Again, doable for those of you at a higher level, even like grade 10 ARCT level. And I just wanted to give a shout out to the most difficult piece that I think Greek has. It's Opus 24 Ballad. It's based on a 16th century melody. And generally it's considered to be one of his most intimate and personal compositions written after the deaths of both of his parents. And maybe because of this, Grieg never performed it in public. He just kind of kept it to himself, but it is considered a very influential, important piano piece. So at the very least, even if that's well out of your realm, it's definitely out of my own playing realm, but it's worth listening to and learning even not necessarily to play. So there you have it. As you can see, the best place to start with Grieg's music is his Opus 12 lyric pieces, because it's the lyric pieces book, the first one that has the easiest pieces in it. And then from there, you can branch off into other lyric pieces. They're all, like I said earlier in this video, between kind of that like four to seven intermediate level. And if you are wanting to do something a little bit more fast paced, after doing a few lyric pieces, you could try out his humoresques. And then of course, the poetic tone pictures and scenes from life in a country would be really good choices for the lady intermediate early advanced student as well and we're talking about a huge amount of piano music here so this should be like way more than enough to keep you busy and I know talking about Grieg and introducing his music can be a little uh, iffy with my students sometimes because Grieg isn't super famous like Chopin or Liszt but his music is in that same romantic category and I find it's just really likable music. He's just a, a composer who writes music that we can immediately latch onto. It's not too weird, but it's interesting. It's not too emotional, but it has emotive qualities in it. He's not too sappy or sentimental, um, but he's not too like out there at the same time. He's a really balanced composer, so I really like introducing my students to Grieg's music. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I will catch you next week. See you later, guys. Hi, and welcome to today's episode of Piano TV. Happy 2019, and thank you for 